How's it going, everybody? I wanted to take a, a few minutes and kind of lay out some things that I've been seeing lately in the industry in terms of some misunderstandings and stuff like that. And this isn't a, you know, you're doing things wrong or you shouldn't be doing this or you shouldn't be doing that. It's, it has nothing to do with that. Um, what this, or what I really wanted to just discuss is uh, my experience as a network engineer in the job itself of a network engineer. So not necessarily the projects that I worked on or the companies that I worked for, or the customers that I engaged with or anything like that. But more or less, what was the job like? Because I don't, I, I don't think I've ever really gone into any real depth as to how that works. So I kind of want to just leave it, uh, have a video where we just break things down like that. So one of the first questions that I get quite a bit is from people that are often already in the industry and they want to move forward into something different, whether it's they're already a network engineer and they want to move into other aspects of engineering, whether it's a different track, like maybe they want to go from security to voice or from collaboration to wireless, something along those lines. I also had the folks that are hardcore route switch security data center engineers that are very similar to myself but now with automation and orchestration and things like that, they're kind of conflicted. Do I go the automation orchestration route with things like Python and Ansible, or do I make the transition over to cloud? Because there's deployments that are needed to be done where AWS or Azure or Google Cloud is being used to deploy the solutions that their company is going in that particular direction. So. One of the things that I often struggle with when I first got into the industry is a really defined plan as to what I needed to do in order to execute the job that I had to go do. In other words, when I was given a task, a project or, or something else that needed to be done, um, my thought process when I first got into the industry was that I would approach it the same way I would a lab. For example, if I was learning a new technology, I don't care really what, what it is, but I would, you know, you sit down, you run through the config, you do the verification checks, make sure that the PCs can ping or, you know, the routes propagate or whatever your verification steps are. Well, when you're typing these commands in, your goal is to go through those steps, right? You're, that's, that's your end goal, right? That's your, your labbing, your learning, that type of stuff. You shouldn't do what you're labbing when you're labbing, that shouldn't be what you do in a deployment. So you should be using the time that's not being dedica dedicated to the actual deployment. All that other time should be, that you're working should be t dedicated to making sure that the deployment goes as s successful as possible. In other words, let's take into consideration you have a deployment where you have to roll out new hardware and it can be either in a green field, so a new deployment, or it's a brownfield deployment where you're adding additional services or capabilities to an existing deployment and you can't break anything and you got to keep it up and running. Regardless of how you want to carve that up, when you're not doing your deployment, let's say your change, main, change window is from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. That's a very common time frame. Some places are later than that. Sometimes it's 1 a.m. to 5 a.m. I've, I've done both. The point being is when you go through your deployment, that deployment shouldn't be you sitting in front of the command line for, for several hours typing commands in as if you were labbing. You should be spending your time before that in other capacities, maybe working on that same piece of hardware but in a testing type of scenario. Maybe you've got Eve NG or GNS3 or Viral or a physical lab that you can play with. You shouldn't be sitting in front of the command line typing commands in if you have done your due diligence before that, right? Your configuration should already be in place. I'll give you a perfect example. Just recently, I ended up having to deploy some colo equipment. So I took a firewall and a server and I deployed it into a co-location facility here in the Midwest. I won't tell you where or what and all that type of stuff. I had a deployment window of a Thursday evening and a Friday during the day. 
my goal was to get everything done Thursday. So we showed up at the data center at, I don't know, 4, 5 p.m. We get checked in. We are walked to a what they call a burn-in room, which simply just means that it allows you to get all of your equipment unpacked, you know, everything physically plugged into it instead of doing that in front of the server rack, stuff like that. So we went through and did all the, those steps. And before that, I had already configured the firewall, right, because I already had access to it. I configured the firewall from scratch, but I didn't have access to the server. But I did everything I could possibly do for the server preparation-wise before I got to the server. So I already had VMware ESXi 6.7 on a bootable USB drive. And it was just a matter of getting the server to boot up, plugging the USB drive into one of the USB ports on the server, going through and setting up the SIMC because it was a UCSC 240. I got that done, got the SIMC set up. And then I went through and started going through the, the boot up process. I took the boot up process and I manually chose the USB port. The VMware pop-up came in. I went through the install process. Boom, we were done. I had the server up and running in under half an hour. So, but I, before that, I didn't have access to the server, but I had done as much preparation as I could. I had tested installing ESXi 6.7 several times, making sure that I could you know, gain access to the, uh, the Windows Server ISO file that I needed. I was able to upload that to the data store that it was going to sit on. I did as much preparation work as I could so that when I got on site, I wasn't sitting there for any longer than I needed to be typing commands in. Then we physically moved the server and the firewall into the data center. We put it into the, the cabinet that it was going to sit in and we got it all powered on. I consoled into it to make some final adjustments so that I could get access to it. So I'd make sure SSH was working. I made sure any connect VPN was working. So, and I got the minimums. I saved my configurations. I rebooted the firewall and I rebooted the server to make sure in the event of a power outage that everything would come back online the way that it was expected to, right? So I did all of those steps, which was my post deployment test plan. Again, planning goes heavily into this. Once I was all said and done, I, my son was able to come with me on the deployment. We got in the car, we drove to the hotel. And um, I didn't do anything that night for the, in the hotel. I, you know, we ate dinner and then uh, we hung out. You know, we watched some TV, we talked a little bit back and forth. And then the next morning we got up and we got on the road. We drove back to, back to home, which is a few hours away. We got home. I didn't do anything that day either. That was Friday. I had um, uh, the weekend, and I didn't start doing anything until Monday. Why Monday? Well, because I was comfortable where I left the, the project, right? Now, I know not every situation is like that, and you might be, you know, that particular piece of hardware or that new deployment might be used right away, and that's fine. If that's the case, then take it for what it is. But the point being, when it comes to engineering, is you want to take into consideration what you're trying to deploy, right? You have to understand what's going to be rolled out. If you have any hesitations or there's anything like, I'm not sure on this, or you don't know this well enough, you need to do your due diligence to go learn whatever it is you're going to be deploying, right? If you're taking a lead, whether you inherited it because of somebody else was deploying it, or you had this idea and you decided to run with it, there's multiple ways you can look at it. But the deployment itself, the deployment window, you shouldn't be standing in front of a console window for hours configuring things, unless you don't have a choice but to do that. If it's outside of your control, then obviously it's outside of your control. Like, for example, me with the server, I didn't have the server available to me, but I did as much preparation work as I could before that. I knew what I needed to do. I wrote down, I took my... The plans that I had in my mind, I wrote them down, I laid them all out, and um, I bounced them off people that I knew. And I said, okay, this is what I'm planning on doing. I, do you think I'm overlooking anything? And they were like, no, that, that sounds good, man. I think you're in good shape. But it's what they would call peer review. Bounce things off of people you can. You know, whether it's an, a coworker, whether it's somebody you trust, I pinged people that I trusted. So I said, hey, this is what I'm deploying. Does this sound like it's going to work? And they're like, yeah. I did a lot of testing before that. You know, the three hours that I was at that data center, I must have spent 30 hours doing preparation and planning and testing and 
validation that this is going to work. Because that's what your job is, right? Your job isn't just to configure something on the fly on the command line in a data center or whatever it is you're deploying in. You should be doing as much lead work as you can so that when it comes to actually deploying your hardware or uh, doing your services that you're installing or configuring or setting up, it should be, if, if for as much as you can, a copy and paste, right? You shouldn't be sitting there going, hmm, what's that command again? You don't want to be in that type of a situation. But those are things that come into play that you really need to understand and go through the, the pieces that come into play with that. So once you do that, you're in good shape. But that being said, when you've gone through all those steps, you should be in really good shape. Now the deployment went really, really well, and I was really happy with how it all came to, came to be. But it took a lot of lead time in order to get there. So that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about in this video. When you're in the engineering field, specifically network engineering, you wanna spend as much time as you can prior to the deployment, making sure things are gonna work the way that you expect them to. And if they don't, well, guess what? You have to figure that out, right? And, you, and if you wanna look really good in front of a customer or your boss or what have you, do all the lead work to that project before you actually go through the deployment. And if you do, things will come out really, really well. So that includes anything like cabling, IP addressing, basic routing, layer two, layer three, etc. There was a, another example that I'm thinking about now where when it, come, when it came to doing IPsec VPNs, you know, make sure that you, you know, you're demoing or you're practicing those configs. Make sure that you're, all that stuff is done before you're at the deployment piece. Because if you do it the right way, then you should never have a scenario where you're like, huh, well, maybe this will work, maybe this won't work. So the lead, the engineering time. So if you spend 40 hours a week and in a network engineering job, 80% of the time is gonna be doing your preparation, your testing, your validation, talking to people, peer review, that so on and so forth. The 20% extra, which is gonna fall outside of that 40 hour window, is gonna be your deployment time. So if you work a nine to five job in network engineering, then your deployments likely are not gonna happen during the day. It simply just doesn't happen very often. It, it could, but in most cases it's not. It's gonna happen at an off time hour, a weekend, after hours, like you know nine o'clock at night, two in the morning, Saturday or Sunday, something like that when the, the amount of work on the network is much, much lower and the, the chance of impact is greatly reduced. Right, that's the whole point of doing off hours changes. So, but you wanna make sure you're spending all that time doing your, for your deployment, all the preparation beforehand is taken care of. If you're in good shape there, then that's all you can really worry about, right? Do what you can with what you can. If you can't control it, well then you can't control it. So I wanted to, just, to share that little bit of information with you guys. Hopefully that helps people understand stuff and will give you a better understanding of what the network engineering job is all about. Until next time, guys, thanks so much for stopping by, and we'll catch you guys in the next video.